free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So the question is, how how is that going to apply? And, and, and we are, there are no answers that I can give you now regarding how that's going to apply and what's going to work. Because what you would find if you talk to the folks from the Center for Medicare Advocacy, and I think Linda and Deb are going to speak to this, is that not only locally but nationally so far kind of nothing has worked. Mm -hmm. Nothing has worked regarding actually causing this to be implemented. I mean, one of the thoughts that had, that had occurred to some of us was, was encouraging the creation of standard doctor's orders so that if you've got a patient that's got this kind of cluster of symptoms, here's going to be this standardized order which is going to cause, um, which is going to include skilled care, right, and, and which is going to cause GEMO to be effective. Is that going to work? I don't know. Um, we do know, all right, no, this is a personal feeling of mine, that what is interesting about these cases, specifically I think as they affect the dementia, the person with the dementia symptoms, is that the OT and PT becomes kind of the center of the story, right? Whereas traditionally in Medicare, the skilled, the nurse was the center of the story, right? So in terms of the, the services that, are, that need to be provided for those folks in order to either keep them the same or keep them from deteriorating, it would seem that the plans that need to be developed really need to focus on PT and OT hours. Um, so, and, but then there's this question, so what, if what is maintenance if there is inevitable deterioration? How does one write a plan of care since in all of the 60-day cases, as well as in the nursing home, there needs to be a plan of care that is signed by a doctor at some point that says here are the things that are necessary in order to X, in order to keep the person maintained or in order to keep the person from deteriorating. So how does that plan get described? So is it necessary, for instance, for an OT to be regularly coming back in order to check on the skill level of the person who has been trained to a particular skill level, except that they've got dementia. And so they're forgetting that stuff really quickly, right? So, so what, what, is the, what is the plan of care um, that, can be just, that can be justified, right? And I think that is re directly related to, um, actually it's, got, it's a later slide, I'm a, yeah. It's directly related to, oh, no, I'm not gonna do those yet. I was going to do those and I said, no. Um, a couple of other things. Um, before I get to that, remember that comment. It's directly related to something. We're going to talk about the something a little bit later on. Um, so as you've probably already experienced in dealing with the VNAs and with the nursing homes, right, one of the interesting, from a lawyer's perspective, interesting uh, aspects of Medicare is that if care is being given and then gets stopped, then that stopping of care can be appealed. And we'll talk about appeals in a second. But nobody is entitled to care. Nobody is entitled on the first day that you get to the nursing home or that the, that the VNA shows up to have VNA say, oh, we have to provide you with care. Or we have to provide you with care which, for which we are going to look for reimbursement from Medicare. None of those organizations can be required to do that, right? And if they're not providing the care, well, how do you appeal from that, right? Because your clients are not entitled to the, to, at the beginning, to be entitled to, you're not, they're not entitled to that, to that. They're entitled to keep their services from being cut off, but they're not entitled to that, right? One of the, the remedies for that would be if you were the VNA or, and if you were, oh, and by the way, one of the reasons why that's so significant to the VNAs as well as to the uh, nursing homes, and I had thought when we started doing these presentations, and we did a presentation, um, I did one with, at Scott Plum's organization, the home, the, the organization of nursing homes, right, Mass Senior Care, Mass Senior Care, so we did one in, in, uh, in April, um, and, and my sense was that this was the issue, right, was that they were just concerned, because we, we know that nursing homes, as well as VNAs, are very concerned about getting audited by CMS. Because if CMS, because you know how it works, right? They, both of these entities are getting payments in advance. They're both prospective payment systems. 
but they're going to be subject to random somebody just pulling out some files six months, 12 months later and saying, send us some more documentation, please. And then if the documentation isn't what the contractor wanted to see, then CMS in their next check to that VNA or nursing home, we're just going to have a little line that says, oh, by the way, we've subtracted $200,000 from your payment this month because those other payments, as far as we're concerned, we shouldn't have made, so we're pulling them back. So it isn't like CMS has to go chase the money because all of these organizations are bound at the hip to CMS. They're living off of the CMS checks every month. Um, I, did, I did quite a bit of work with the, visiting, with the, nurse, the uh, VNA of Martha's Vineyard. Anybody familiar with that group? So you know they blew up, right? They imploded. That's why mm -hmm. CMS did some audits and came back and said, oh, sorry, you can't have your check this month. And they weren't running really, they were running pretty close, and it really just, they died, right? They've now been replaced by the VNA of Cape Cod and the islands, who are having a lot of trouble because it's out on Martha's Vineyard, right? I do a lot of work on Martha's Vineyard, and I keep trying to explain to the other 53 lawyers at Myrick O'Connell that, <laughs> that it's worked. So actually, I'm got, that's why we're running close to that. I got a boat at 8.30, and I'm, th and I'm trying to compensate for traffic, right? Um, so we thought that the way to deal with this, and we had suggested this, we said, well, maybe we need to be having the nursing homes and the VNAs saying to the patient, look, we're afraid to give you these services because we're afraid that if, if this gets reversed at CMS, we're going to be subject to an audit. And, when the, and if we're subject to an audit, the audit is not just about the cases that got flipped, right? The cases that got paid for and then got reversed. The audit's about everything. The audit's about whether you're complying with all of your HIPAA rules, all of your employment rules, all of your anti-Stark rules. There's a whole set of stuff a set of reasons why you never want to see CMS show up if you're a VNA or if you're one of these nursing homes. So we thought that that was the story, right? And so we talked to the nursing homes about, well, maybe that's the way that you can make money. Maybe you can just, you know, not provide the care or start it, but then encourage these people to file an appeal through CMS. That way, if they, lo if they lose the appeal, you haven't lost. You are the nursing home or the VNA, so you're not going to be subject to an audit. It's like a little trick, right? Um, but on the other hand, if they win, well, then everything, everything works. Um, and, and by the way, that's the appeal process, and it's in the, it's in the notes. It, so, it's, so, you know, as you, well, I'm, you all, well, you know, right? You've done that. You've, you've done this, right? So you have, I want to say, 48 hours from the day that somebody gets denied care after they've already been on um, to ask for an expedited appeal from the MAC. Um, if you haven't done that, and most people miss the deadline, you, then you have the ability to ask for a, a so-called redetermination, that's what it's called, by filing within 120 days. Well, of course, by that time, many of our clients are dead, right? Or they've deteriorated, their situation has changed, something has changed. And then they'll give you a decision there, supposedly, within 60 days of that. And by the way, that's all a paper appeal. Um, and then if you don't like that decision, then you can ask for, re for a reconsideration from the QIO and you've got 180 days to file that, and then they've got 60 days to make a decision, right? So there's a year, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you've lost at all those levels, and typically you're going to lose here, maybe you're going to win here at the QIO, then you go to the ALJ, the Administrative Law Judge. And in that case, you have 60 days to file the appeal. They have 60 days from the date of the hearing to make a decision. But the space between these 60 days and that 60 days can be really big. The difference, the, the space between the day you file the appeal and the date of the hearing can be a long time. So in here, total, total is probably two or two and a half years, right? So uh, Deb and Linda, yeah, exactly. So Deb and Linda are going to talk to you about that. Once again, I mean, you know, I do nothing but elder law. I have clients that die every week. You know, this is where I'm dealing with a lot of folks kind of close to the end, you know, and if, they're, and if they've got a, that dementia, we all know that's only going in one direction. So to, you need to be dealing with it right away. 